and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're introducing the new Magic Iris Holly Wreath add-on. This die is designed to work with the Magic Iris die, but it is also beautiful on its own as well. So let's take a look at the pieces that this die creates. Of course, there is the main holly wreath portion of the die. It will also cut out the center of the wreath. There are some holly leaves, some poinsettia leaves, and a couple different choices of berries. There's also a poinsettia and the center of the poinsettia. For the poinsettia flower, you can take two of these flowers and layer them together by offsetting the petals. You can do the same for the center of the flower and then of course layer that right into the middle and you have this beautiful poinsettia flower. This will then layer right on top of those poinsettia leaves that the die creates as well. For the berries, there are an option of single berries and then these trio of berries. And there's also a die that will cut out a solid piece to layer behind the berries so that it fills in the little hole or shine mark that is created by the die. These little trios of berries are perfect to layer right in the center of those two holly leaves as well. Now for the single berries, these are perfect to layer onto the large holly wreath. So there are these little circular areas on this die cut. You can just add a small dot of glue and drop these berries right into place. Luckily this die cuts multiple berries so it makes it really easy to fill in all of these little details on this die cut. Now let's take a look at how this Magic Iris works with the Magic Iris add-on. You'll simply layer this around the opening that's created in that Magic Iris add-on panel and you get this beautiful wreath around your Magic Iris opening. You can embellish it even more by using the poinsettia or the extra holly. The extra little trio of berries also looks really cute layered into the greenery of this wreath. Now let's use this die to create a Magic Iris card. We'll be cutting the main holly wreath from three different pieces of cardstock. We're using cilantro, noble fir, and also some beautiful pearlescent vellum. We're also going to cut the berries from some chili pepper cardstock. We'll be using the single berries and the trio of berries. And then we're going to take that solid piece that layers behind the trio of berries and cut that from that leftover noble fur cardstock that came from the center of the wreath. Now we're using some liquid glue to just put a line of glue just around the circle of the frame. And then we will layer the cilantro cardstock on top of the pearlescent vellum, shifting the wreath so that the leaves from the one behind you can see through the one on front. We'll do the same by adding some liquid glue to that cilantro and then layering the noble fur on top. And you get this really beautiful full wreath with all three of those papers showing through. Now we can go in and add some liquid glue just to the little dots on the wreath and add in our little single berries. And I just love these little pops of red that we get from these holly berries. Once we get all of the berries onto the wreath, we're also going to layer some of the trio of berries and we're adding some glue to the back of the red piece that's die cut. And then we'll just layer those noble fur green pieces that are solid that we cut earlier onto the back side. This will simply fill in the little opening on the berries with that same dark green that we used on the wreath. Once we have those little trios of berries assembled, we're just going to add some dots of glue to the back and add them just scattered around our holly wreath here. And I love the addition of those extra pops of red. Now for the Magic Iris panel, we're going to use the Magic Iris add-on and cut some of this red favorite flannel plaid paper. Then we can add some liquid glue again to the frame of our holly wreath and we'll just layer this right onto the pattern paper aligning that opening with the inside of the wreath. Next up we need to create the mechanism of the magic iris that will layer behind the panel we created. We want to cut three solid circles 
three of these sausage pieces, three stabilizers, and then one pull tab. We're cutting all of these out of Noble for cardstock. Then we're going to take this radioactive looking piece and cut this out of one of the circles. So you want to line that up with the center, hold this in place with a little bit of low tack tape, and run it through your die cut machine. And this will cut some curved slots for our little sausage pieces that need to move to fit into. You only need to do this out of one of those circles. Then you're gonna take the little tab of those sausage pieces and slide it into those slots. And then align those sausage shaped pieces with the circle itself, just like this. Next, we wanna take some mini glue dots and add a dot directly onto the little X that the die creates on the end of each of these sausage shaped pieces. Once we have those dots in place, we can make sure that these pieces are aligned with the circle below. And then we'll take one of the solid circles and layer it right on top, aligning these circles together and picking up those glue dots onto the back of the circle. Next, we want to flip the whole thing over and add our stabilizer pieces. The die creates some little guides for you to know exactly where to put these pieces. You want to align these pieces with those guides near the center of the circle. They have a little arch at the end that show you exactly where to align them up. Then we can flip this over, and then next we want to add our little pull tab. We'll add this to the right of one of the stabilizer pieces, aligning the inside with the inside circle. Finally, we'll layer the third circle on top, add some adhesive to the stabilizer sticking out, and then wrap them around loosely to the top. You can always refer back to the intro to the Magic Iris video for more detailed instructions on how to assemble the Magic Iris. Now that the stabilizers are all in place, we can see that the mechanism is working properly, and we can move on to adding our little decorative pull tab. So when you use the add-on, we need to use the little decorative pull tab for the add-on. We're cutting it out of the same pattern paper that we use for the add-on panel. We'll just add this to our little pull tab, and then we're just going to trim off that excess green that you see peeking out the side. Now we will add adhesive all over this top circle, making sure to not get any in the center. And then we can align our magic iris with the panel we created earlier, making sure that that little tab lines up perfectly in that little notch. Now we'll add some foam squares to the four corners of this panel. You wanna make sure that there's room for that pull tab to move. And we're adding this to a craft cardstock card base. You can see there, it is moving perfectly. Now for our sentiment, we're using the Magic Holiday Messages stamp set and we're stamping out the Happy Holidays sentiment with some red ink on white paper. We'll be using the coordinating die for this stamp set to cut this circle out. And this circle will fit perfectly inside the Magic Iris wreath that we've already created. Now that we have our sentiment, we can take this to our Magic Iris card, open up that Magic Iris opening, add some adhesive to the back of this circle, and then we'll just drop it into that opening. Finally, we'll add some adhesive all over a card base and add this panel to that card base. And then here is our finished Magic Iris card, and I just love that beautiful layered holly wreath around that opening. Next up, I'll be using the Magic Iris Holly Wreath add-on to create a non-Magic Iris card. I'm starting out by cutting out a rectangle. This is with the largest of the outside in stitched rectangles from some Aqua Favorite flannel paper. Then I'll be cutting the Holly Wreath with some Peacock cardstock. You can see there I also cut a second one out of ballet slipper cardstock, but I did not actually end up using that on this project. I have my little berries here that I'm adding to my wreath. I cut these from some guava card stock, so I'm going for some non-traditional colors for my card today. 
I am going to use that ballet slipper cardstock for my card base so that I have that light pink border around my panel. And then for my sentiment, I'm using some speckled eggshell cardstock and those magic holiday messages again, and I'm stamping it in peacock ink. I'll be using the sentiment that says, let it snow. And I'm stamping in peacock ink so it will match the other colors on my card. And then I'll use the coordinating die for the magic holiday messages to cut out this circle with my sentiment inside. Once I have that lined up, I'll just hold it in place with some removable tape and cut that out. I also use the mini snowflakes die set to cut out some pink snowflakes, which I will use to decorate my card as well. But before I go that far, I want to go ahead and add my pattern paper to my card base. Then I can take my sentiment and my wreath and I'll just be adding these in the center. I'm actually going to add the wreath first, but I'm using that sentiment circle as a guide so I make sure everything looks nice and centered. I'm adding some glue around that frame and the circle and then just some dots on the back side of the leaves and the berries. This will make sure everything is nice and stuck down. And again, I'm just using that centerpiece as a guide, so I'm going to pop that out and then make sure everything is nice and tacked down. And the reason why I did not glue the center in with the sentiment is because I'm going to pop it up with some foam squares so it has some dimension away from that wreath. So I'll just add those foam squares and then pop this circle right back into the center. Now I am adding a poinsettia flower, but I decided not to layer my poinsettia on this one. I wanted a little less pink, so I'm just adding one layer of that flower, and I think that also looks really nice. For the leaves behind the poinsettia, I did use some rainforest cardstock, so it is a little bit darker than the peacock cardstock of the wreath. And that will make those leaves stand out just a little bit more. I'm also adding that centerpiece, and since I only used one of the leaves, or the petals I should say, I'm only using one centerpiece for this one. Now I can move on to those mini snowflakes that I cut from Ballet Slipper cardstock, and I'll just add a few of those to the top and the bottom corners, kind of creating a diagonal across my card of snowflakes. I am overlapping my wreath a little bit, which I think is a fun look. And you can do this, especially since my wreath is only one layer and it's glued directly to that panel. And then finally, I'm adding a little bit of shimmer with some iridescent sequins. So I've just added some little dots of glue and I'm just picking up those sequins and adding them all around. I think this kind of gives the look of some shimmery snow falling down onto the card. I also added some to the center of the snowflakes, which I think is a really fun look as well. And then I'm adding one to the center of my poinsettia to make it match. And here is my finished card with that Magic Iris Holly Wreath add-on, but as not a Magic Iris card. And I just think that this color scheme is so pretty and this turned out just lovely. Now let's take a look at some examples from the design team. I really love Audrey's card with those bold stripes in the background and I love how she colored her wreath. Grace's card is so much fun. I love how she combined the Magic Iris Holly Wreath add-on with the camera add-on to create a really fun card where you pull that lever and you get that really cool scene with the little house inside. It is so much fun. Aenea's card is so sweet. I love that wreath on that pattern paper and then that gold glittery sentiment on the vellum across it. Pammy's card is so cute. I love how she added the cute little build a snowman in the center of the wreath. And then Elise's card is so pretty. I love her layers of the wreath and those beautiful poinsettias all around. Megan's card is so fun. I love her color she used in her wreath and that scripty joy in the center. And then Leticia's card is so sweet. I love her addition of the cute little winter bird in the center of her wreath. Kelly's card is so beautiful. I love all those layers on the craft and of course the addition of that beautiful peppermint twine.
And then Melissa's peppermint stripe background is so fun and festive, and I love how she added the holly branches to her wreath as well. Maureen's card is so beautiful. I love how she created a window shaker behind her wreath. Looks like a wreath on a window pane. And then here is another look at the magic iris card that Rebecca created today, as well as another look at the non-magic iris card that I created today. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank you.